Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The, um, welcome to you all, I would say, to what I trust will be a very inspiring and exciting conference. Don't think this is all the audience. That we have 250 registrants, but as is the habit in Singapore, people come in late and some people don't come. But as we are going, I'm sure the, audience, the auditorium will fill up more. Uh, but most in particular, I want to welcome uh, Professor Bertel Anderson, the president of our university. My name is Jan Fassbinder, and I'm the director of Paralimes. Paralimes means beyond boundaries, and that very nicely sums up uh, its mission, that is to go beyond boundaries of disciplines, cultures, and institutes to explore complexity. Paralimes is the successor of the complexity program that spun off the Complexity Institute during last year's conference, Hidden Connections. The Complexity Institute is dedicated to do world-class research on complexity problems. It is led by Steve Lansing, who I haven't seen yet, but who will be here shortly, and Peter Sloat. Steve is an anthropologist, Peter a computational scientist, and together they form a great couple to lead this institute. As the, complexity, sorry, as the Complexity Institute started its, its activities, Paralimes was launched to continue and intensify the organizational activities of the Complexity Program, such as the layout of conferences like the one that is about to start. As we want to get this conference going, I will not say too much, just a few remarks about logistics and some thoughts about the theme emerging patterns. To start with the logistics, Please silence all your electronic devices. I'm not going to wait for a minute for you to do so. <laughs> I trust you will. Uh, all speakers will have one and a half hours for their talk and subsequent discussion, roughly split half and half. It is up to the chairman to somehow coach them to do this. Uh, after each talk, there will be uh, break for coffee, tea, or lunch, in which you can corner the speaker that you want to corner, or somebody else if you want to. Check your email, think, sub think about intrigues, or check on the stock market. All the talk talks and discussions will be recorded. These recordings will eventually uh, be uploaded on internet. That may take a couple of weeks, but it will happen. The students in the audience, or in, in, the, in the, the auditorium, that will walk around with microphones. Please make sure that you um, use one of these so that the rest of the audience can hear your questions or comments. And please state your name and where you come from. There's one last minute change in the program, although in the booklet you would, will not notice it has changed because it's already incorporated. But Urs Zamatri, uh, Zapmari, who was supposed to speak on Tuesday, gave us a, sent us a mail on the last Wednesday that he's very ill and could not come. So fortunately, Sander van der Leeuw, who is in the audience already, has agreed to, to replace him. And I very much look forward to hear his talk. Steve Lansing will chair that session and will then introduce Sander in a proper way. Now some words about the, uh, the, the theme, Emerging Patterns. I recently read a beautiful book by Lin Yu Tang. It's, his name is The Importance of Living. I mean the book. The, the name of the book is The Importance of Living. Lin Yu Tang was a Chinese writer, translator, linguist, and inventor. He invented the, the Chinese type machine. And accidentally, in the middle of the 1950s, for a very short time, he was also the first president of Nanyang University. In The Importance of Living, he writes in the chapter The Art of thinking, and I quote, one of the greatest contrasts between Chinese and Western scholarship is the fact that in the West there is so much specialized knowledge and so little humanized knowledge, while in China there is so much more concern with the problem of living, while there is no specialized sciences. End of quote. Mind you, Yu Tang wrote this in 1937, when the world was about to be overturned and China was a totally different country. But in many ways, he makes a point uh, that is still valid if you look at, it, at the contrast between hard sciences that shaped our world in the last few hundred years 
through the technology that the technologies that they made possible, and the social sciences that never were part of the mindset of the hard scientists, hard scientists and engineers. So I will rephrase Lin Yu Tang's statement as follows. One of the greatest contrasts between hard sciences and social sciences is that the hard sciences are concerned with strong theoretical concepts and hard physical laws, and very little with humanized knowledge. While the social sciences are much more concerned with humanized knowledge and largely lack theoretical concepts and hard laws. The point I want to make is that I believe that one of the biggest challenges of the combined communities of hard sciences and social sciences is to find a way in which the humanized knowledge of the social sciences and the conceptual strength of the hard sciences will enrich each other. For that to happen, we need new patterns and metaphors. We need to look for patterns that emerge in the unknown territory between the hard sciences and the social sciences, and between the sciences, arts, philosophies, and practice. And these patterns may emerge because we focus or refocus and recontextualize our thinking, or they may actually evolve in the more, ever more intense interactions between people in the still growing world population. And once we recognize those patterns, we need to understand them on a deeper level and find metaphors so that we can, can communicate them. With that in mind, we looked for speakers for this conference who could enlighten us with examples of some of the patterns they see emerging in their work and beyond. And as you can see from the program, we have succeeded to find such speakers, speakers all leaders in their field. Together, they will cover a large range of areas. And to get that ball rolling and open this celebration of emerging patterns, I'd like to invite Professor Anderson to the stage. There is, of course, no need to, prof to introduce Professor Anderson to you, but I would like to stress that he is one of the greatest generators of emerging patterns that I know. None of the complexity programs, its conferences, its initiatives, the Complexity Institute, or Paralimas would have come about if it were not for the energy that he put in and the space he granted to let them emerge and develop. Please give a warm welcome to Professor Anderson. Okay, dear colleagues and guests, dear conference participants, good morning. It's of course an uh, honor for me to welcome you to Singapore, to Nanyang Technological University, and uh, of course to the conference on emerging patterns. NTU in Singapore has in the last decade or so rapidly established itself as a research intensive university on the international arena. And at the same time, uh, it has broadened its academic portfolio, not only engineering as in the past, but now also humanities, social science, art, natural sciences, and also medicine. NTU has the ambition not only to be research intensive in a disciplinary context, but also to take a leading position in certain areas. Also, the interdisciplinary aspect of modern research is something we try to em embrace. The frontiers of knowledge is today often to be found at borders, at interfaces of disciplines, rather than within the disciplines themselves. Even from my own experience in Stockholm, where we give out a modest prize in December, I'm talking about the Nobel Prize, um, and in the committees and when we work, we realize more and more that discoveries worth the Nobel Prize are not necessarily always to be found within the disciplines, within the traditional disciplines but actually between <coughs> disciplines. That has, of course, led to the Nobel Committee in Physics and Chemistry now have joint meetings and the same for medicine. Actually, that was not the case only 15 years ago. But today, this has become much more complex, even uh, at the Nobel Prize level. Like Nobel Prizes in Chemistry, today they are in the border to physics, material science, to biology, to medicine, 
and also to environment. And I think that is, a, is an evidence on the highest level on the change of how we create knowledge today. A particular challenge and opportunity for interdisciplinary research is to address issues related to complex systems, and John has already alluded to that. Be it the human brain, be it the climate systems, or be it urban megacities. NTU has since about two years established a complexity program, as John indicated, which more recently has been divided into a complexity research institute and into a think tank activity that we have given the name Paralimes and indeed headed by Jan here, which we just heard. Actually, uh, the idea for Paralimes was first presented or emerged in Europe some 10 years ago, I would say. Jan Fis Fassbinder interacted uh, with a group of European researchers, including Nobel Prize winners and research funders, and I was one of them as head of the European Science Foundation. And his uh, uh, ambition or his vision was to start a European complexity institute. He was inspired by the American Santa Fe Institute in New Mexico, which today, of course, has become uh, the ionic pioneer institution for complexity studies. However, to cut a long story short, both Jan and I were exported from Europe and we ended up here in, 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 in Asia. So we left the European scene for Asia and Singapore. But we had our ideas about complexity studies, complexity institute and Paralimus packed in our luggage. And we came here, Dr. Su Guaning, who was then the president, helped us to unpack our ideas and put them into reality. And after that, I have also pushed the, the issue. So now we have this complexity profile here at NTU. The first complexity conference we had at NTU was back in 2012. Uh, it had the title more is different. More is different is actually coined by the 1977 Nobel Prize winner in physics, Phil Anderson. More is different. Think about it. I, that's a quite interesting statement. More is different. And actually, it's quite interesting. I talked about disciplinarity in the context of Nobel Prize, so in a sense, being the top of uh, disciplinary achievement in, in certain areas. But I'm saying this is changing. Yeah. And it's quite interesting that many Nobel Prize winners in physics at their more senior age has actually engaged in interdisciplinary and complex systems to quite some extent. And there is an array of examples of that. So that's another indication. Anyway. In 2013, our second conference was done and called Hidden Connection, and last year, in 2014, we called it a crude look at it all. So, as I said initially, this is the fourth conference in our series, and it's about emerging patterns. And I'm not going to prescribe what these emerging patterns should be. They should emerge during this conference, and I think this is also an inspirational picture, and I think we're going to have how intelligence was emerged is going to be in the next talk. So this is already setting the bar very high in the discussions. Finally, according to my tradition, when I open conferences here, I always encourage the participants, particularly the foreign participants, not only to uh, sit here, but also maybe take a little bit stroll in a beautiful campus here at NT, NTU. It has been there are many rankings at NTU, but I'm too modest to talk about them. But uh, uh, one of the high rankings we achieved is the beauty of our campus, and, uh, which is a unique uh, residential campus, uh, but also a tropical campus. And there are not so many of those in there. So, so try to take a stroll here and look at it. But most of all, enjoy the conference, enjoy each other's, and 
enjoy the emerging patterns. Thank you very much.